Hello, hello. Thank you for joining. Good day, good day. You're welcome. Okay, it, it's a good habit to to finish whatever one started, and that's why I'm here today. Let me conclude this section because I was gonna show you how I did more with Java with with Bash script than than just um, some projects um, given to us by by some organization and that, that was training us yeah. so you understand if you're a student of LX you know so I did more than that with bash script so you know, I was just trying to share some in a way that would not confuse someone in a way that someone would look can see it and learn and be inspired and uh, and feel like okay these things we are learning are not just abstract they are not just um um tedious they are not just they are, they are not useless they are relevant they are useful they are the, the time we spend submitting these projects and getting them done is not in vain if we really try to do something else that is not a project with what we learn i mean it's it's the impact is is it's great it's great so let me go straight to explaining some of my scripts and how they work and how I, come up, how, how I come about some of these scripts so that you too that is watching can start doing your own you know i have this react app that i'm building following some tutorial um where is it now um okay let, let me not go down and, and get carried away and uh, here it is gp3 I, I, I was going to show you how that I need to run the command um, npm run start to 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 st start the app, right? So because I didn't want to be doing this all the time, you know what I did? I went and put it in the script. Uh, that script is just st. So I do st and let's see that is it for me. Let's see the content of st and because of the position of that directory, I need to do sudo. I used to use sudo. <coughs> I need to use sudo. To the command so sudo cards being st i think that's it okay so enter my sudo password all right so here is the contents of the script mm, okay from from here right this is shiban command and i said it should echo this that means should print so, this, so if i just type st in my terminal and press enter it will print this first executing apm start so it will sleep for two seconds you know i i made it so and then to now run the npm starts for me uh, you know just just the way of making it easy so let me dive straight to the script i've got here one is how that i can do g and put the name of repository you know i can do g and put repo and it will clone now this is not a big deal something called ssh in on github let me show you um how it works um so if i generate what we call ssh key i'm not going to be explaining that now right now um if i do that this section will be too very long but basically how you do it is this you it's a security system it's a secured system way of connection connecting to to a remote um device that means a device that is not with you that's not physically present but you want to connect into it you want to connect with, to it and do something so as you're here right now if i give you the public address of my computer system you can connect into this computer and and delete something and uninstall apps you know right so one way you can do that is with the use of ssh okay um so to to, to do that usually you might find a directory like this if you already have something that has to do with ssh you know maybe a non hosts um config all of those you might have directly if you don't have it each if you ever use this command um ssh key gen it is going to be automatically generated and this is going to generate, generate two files for you a public key and a private key okay i'm not going to be explaining much about that but basically how it works is you you keep the public key make sure the public key is present in your system you know and and make sure um 
make sure you know you, you cannot give the public the public key to the system you want to connect to to grant you access to it right so once that system grants you access you can connect enough of the token so if i press enter here right now it generates it's asking me for the name that i want it to have so i'll just copy everything that is here and stop after dot ssh and take this um four slash that is here copy it and paste it here so when i paste it here i give it a name that i want if i don't give it the name that i want it to take this default name id underscore rsa so if i say demo and press enter it will ask me for passphrase i don't want a passphrase i just press enter i press enter again and here it has generated a new key uh, a new uh, pairs of keys that has this name one will be demo.pub one will be demo demo this is the private key and this is the public key how do we find it let's go into this directory and check for them so i'm going to do cd so if i list what is here do you see that i have demo and demo.pub let me show you what the private key looks like very lengthy look at it right the public key is less lengthy so if i cut i hope this is visible enough let me zoom in once more so if i cut into the public key demo.pub you see it's shorter this is the one you give out you never never display this one i'm displaying this one because i'm going to delete it shortly sorry demo right never display this one it's very very private right very private because when I not give out, okay, what's what I'm going to do now so that I won't talk with plenty of token. Now, actually, what I'm using already is this one, screw and screw pub. So what I'm using right now. Uh, this is where, okay, I don't want to explain all of that, but this is where the host you connect to. This is where they are saved. And this is my config file. Let's not go there for now. Okay, now, after generating this, if you use Linux like me, or if you, if you use Mac, after generating this, you want to copy it, then go to GitHub, click here, go for settings. <coughs> there are settings, check somewhere by the left. I think I need to zoom in so you see everything more clearly. So, here by the left, here you will see uh, an option to add, look at it here, SSH and GPG keys. So, if I click on it, now you can see that I have two added. I have Ubuntu 22.042 LTS. I have basic Ubuntu. So these two systems that I have connected here, right? If I if I want to close from there, I don't need my PAT. I can do without the PAT. Right? So to add this one now that I want, assuming that the system was not connected, what I need to do is to click on new SSH key and give it any title. That appears to me it's better it's good to give it a title that will, that will make you remember what system owns that particular ssh key right after giving it a title i will now paste the ssh key here that's it and i press add i'll click on add that's all once i click on add i don't want to add because um, i don't need it so i'm taking this off <clears throat> once i click on add then i am able to clone any repository of my choice from my github without the use of pat i will not be using http link again i'll be using ssh let me show you let me just open any of my repository and show you <clears throat> you may have noticed it you may have noticed that um okay let's do with this okay this is the current project i'm working on <coughs> or one of the projects i'm working on rather mm, you know this one, is, this one is me and me working on my own projects no no LS checker fighting me <laughs> nobody scoring me me learning you know do more okay so if i want to close this repository right now this is the link this is ssh this is https this is the one you take and you put your your uh PAT somewhere here you now put ads and i put this remember okay let me copy let me just demonstrate it on this place um i'm going to clear this screen <clears throat> so uh usually you do git clone and then you paste right and then you want to add your pat here so whatever your pat is you add it here 
after adding it you put the ads if you're putting this thing all right but 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 and if you don't if you don't do this then you need to go and configure have some configurations that will make your system recognize that oh this is your github account otherwise ssh this one now don't need any pat i just paste these traits i just do git clone right git clone and then i paste this link let me let me clone it let me just clone it <coughs> Alright, it cloned successfully. Look at it here. Now with me, the back end. See that? Now, if I write a script, I could write a script to do that for me. This was the first way I wrote the script. The script I'm about to explain now. This was the first thing I did to have that script written. <coughs> um, okay, I will come to that place. Now, the first thing I did to run that script was I will just I just opened the file. Let me just call it. Um, let me just call it okay. I, I call the file G, right? Uh, okay, let me call it something else. Let me call it clone. Mm, clone. But actually, I call it G. Just G. And the first content of that file was this. I, I, I just gave it some, the command I just run on, 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 the, on the command line now. But the difference was that I said go and did clone whatever was passed. As, as the first argument. Whatever, whatever was passed as the first argument, we clone it. Remember, if you you, should, you need to have watched the first and the second part of this video to flow very well here. If this is the first you're watching, I think you need to go and watch the first two so you understand very well. So this is like as I'm saying, whatever is passed to you as the first argument. So if I have this in the file now, I don't want to have this seed. <clears throat> so let me just save it. If I have. I, Okay, I had this in a file that I was uh, named G in a script that I named G. So when I did G and pasted this stuff that I copied, it it does it did the same thing. But then I thought I could do more. I mean, is everything that I have to post? I discovered that oh, this SSL link actually is I mean is the same thing everywhere. The only thing that changes is the name of this repository. As long as it's my own, every other thing is the same. When I discovered that, I said okay, I have to do it in such a way that. I could not only give it the link, I could give it the name of the repository as well. So I could, I mean, I could take all of this off and say um, G, name of the repository, and it will still work. All right? How did I do that? I'm going to show you the script right now and explain that. Let me remove this repository that I just cloned from here. Uh, let me also remove the demo that I just created it's not needed okay and let me show you the script i think i read on github so i'll show you the one i'll explain from github here um let's go back um, where are those scripts yeah so python and bash scripts and then say so I click on bash scripts and here's the script clone where is it now ssh git clone yeah so here is it now the first thing I did was um after the planning she bang I put a comment here the first thing I did was to give it the pattern that the the link pasted is supposed to look like this is called regular expression. Regress. I, 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 don't, I don't intend teaching it, but if you've learned regress before, you can see regress doing readings. How to look for a way to match, have a regular expression and say whatever is coming must have this this uh, symbol is for to ascertain the start of it of the string, and this one, this dollar symbol is to ascertain the end of the string. Okay, so I'm saying that hey, this string must this thing must start to git and have at, and it must have GitHub, and then dot com that it must have um okay this this i replace this with my username right this is if you use ssh replace this code track with your username my username is tipo dk but i don't want i don't want to express uh, expose my details so i have to use code tribe to put it here so um so you put your username change your own put your own username here you see see it on the readme it's like if you want to use it it's there on the readme i explain these things 
well in this on this with me uh, where is it is that it is that it is that it is that it make i don't think it is this one it's another with me here okay uh, yeah so as i said clear and see i explain how to use it if you want to use it okay as by the way let's go back to the file uh -huh. so what i did was i said check whether what they give to you matches this expression where this place that can take um it can be any alphabet uh, and it could be it could have a uh, underscores it could have um dash right but it must end with dot git right so i mean um that's it i mean normally you don't there's a there are, there's something that will not work as the way you name the repository you will not work you can't be putting certain characters like equal to yeah you just know okay so that's those are the things that made me put this uh bold enough to put this regular expression here and that's the same thing you have here right that that's in case someone passed only the name of the repo so i now declare these variables i said if this guy in the i think it was in the last section you know what this guy does by now this one is the one that is like the arg c right so it's like the arg c it counts how many argument was passed on the command line so i'm saying that if this guy is not equal to one right then echo enter either the name of that like that means if if it's more than one argument then the person is doing something wrong whoever is using the script is not using it well because it's expecting one argument either the name of the repository or the ssl link right then i ask you to stop here if this is the case but if it is equal to one to go ahead and do this i say uh, yes else if the first argument is equal to if it matches this regular expression that's saved in this variable then go ahead and clone it or if it matches this regular, this, um, regular expression saved in this repo that means if it's a repository name then what you should do is git clone this and i, I knew that ssl must have this link like this everything like this git at github.com um, 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 column your github username slash the name of the repository dot git so i said okay if this is the if the expression given is only a repository what you should do is as git clone this kind of thing but put the name of the repository here and put dot git so you see and then i say else if it's none of if it's none of this matter echo that the command is invalid input and then remind the person how to use it you know display help so that's it that's it i used it several times so if i just do g the same thing i played before now if i just do g and did i just did i do that today did i do that if i just do g and put this line with me it will clone it again i deleted it before remember i deleted it um look at it here right here so i'm going to delete it again So it's no more there it's gone that's how my script works i think i've i think i've even i think i've even modified the script more just that i don't want to show the one on my system the one on my system has my pat oh no it doesn't have my pat does it no i think it's safe it's actually safe because uh, you, you, it becomes unsafe when you have my private uh, key but you don't so no detail here is unsafe except for the pat okay then the next one now is the pat it's something similar i did something similar so where is it clone with pat clone with pat mm -hmm. clone with my pat okay all right so here it is i i i gave the user this same um, um regular expression so like you start in case someone put something that's not like this Match this regular expression, person will get error. This one I I I saved it as GPAT. GPAT. Remember, I've used it several times. Alright. So um this is what it does. 
it checks for these regular expressions. Uh, you have to have your uh, personal assets token here, and then it will check whether the number of arguments passed is equal to one. And then it will if the number of argument passed is just one, and that argument matches this regular expression, then user is equal to if you want to use this, you replace this with your user GitHub username. So it's saying that user is equal to this this person, and then the the repo is equal to whatever was passed as argument. In other words, if someone passes something that matches this thing, it means that the person is passing only one argument, which is only the name of the repository. So if it, if I pass only the name of a repository, it will assume that it is me. Just go there and take this guy, which which will be my name, or if you are the one using it, it will be your username, and then it will run this thing at the end here. Um, that is it. Uh, ask it to do this and do uh, git clone. Look at it. This is this is the git clone you know now. Git clone HTTPS and then hey, come on, what is happening? Come down. <laughs> As just right, go away. Oh, so you can be full screen like this. I don't remember. Okay, okay, so. Git clone https and then you put the pat at github.com the normal thing the usual thing you know how to do and yeah, so i'm but this time i'm saying go to the variable pat and get this pat that is here put it here that's, that's, what, that's what i mean by dollar pat at this 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 and do dollar user that means since i've said i've said that if it's only one argument then the user is this person go kill the user here this is supposed to be and keep the repo here and put dot kit and clone it what i mean by this is you know the same way you do um um, um you put you put get around sign you put echo or put any command and put get around sign redirection right you redirect outputs of a program into another file what i mean is this um, for example i can say i could say Make like this screen. Echo. Um, we are learning. You know this very well, right? If I do this, what this is supposed to do is just to print we are learning for me here. But if I add a sign like this, this is a sign. This is supposed to be one like this. We we'll just we we'll don't include it, but that's what it's there actually. So uh, so zero for um standard input one for standard output two for standard error all right uh, so if, if i give it a file and say uh, testing or let me call it test file right so it does not print again you know why because it was supposed to be printed but it was redirected it was redirected right the standard output was redirected remember one is the standard output the standard output was redirected into this file so if I check now a file with that name has been created, where is it? Here it is. So if I check the content of this file, it is actually what I redirected into it. And you know that if I do this again, let's if I do this again and and let's say we are having fun. Right? and press enter it will overwrite what was there before this new one that i put now will be what is there we are having fun meanwhile if i do if i didn't want to overwrite it let me see what i can get that one again we are learning if i didn't want to overwrite it i need to put this angular bracket this greater than sign two twice right and it will go and add it as another line to that uh, to that file you see i can if i do it again and again to keep adding to keep adding lines right now um um I, I didn't need to i don't need to have this one here for it to work right i just show you that there's supposed to be one here that we don't add and some persons don't now know about it so we are learning bash scripts let me add another line bash scripts if i cut into it you're seeing it now we have three lines i can keep adding on adding on adding on adding on adding so but if you don't add one here it will assume that it is one if you put it like this it will assume that it is one like this it cannot assume that it is zero 
you cannot assume that it's two. But when it is two, it becomes necessary that you add it. That's why you see this in here. Two greater than greater than. I hope it's clear enough. Okay. Uh -huh. So it could be bigger. Okay. Uh -huh. So that's why you see this two greater than greater than here. Now, you, you, you now know what this command is, I believe. You know, it's in variables. This is a lot of state stored inside variables, and I'm putting the variables here instead of the real things, right? And because I'm expecting these ones from the command line as arguments, and then this one is a variable still there. Okay, now what is this? It's simple. When you see tida, tida means home. Tida means home, right? So tida, that's dog. So I'm saying that, hey, go and add this thing, go and append. Add it to a line. Of course, if there is nothing, if there is no such file, it will create it and put first line. If something happens again, you to keep another line. You put another line. You understand? So I'm saying go and create a file with this name dot. The moment the, the reason I put dots at the beginning is so that it will be a hidden file. The moment you run the script on your on your system, it will create this file automatically in your home directory. It will be hidden. Why did I create it? So that it will not be showing no more things, no more message. This message you saw when I clone. Earlier, if I clone with this uh, um, command now, it does not show those messages. Like, let me just uh, let me see. GPAT. Do I still have that on uh, my clipboard? Yes, you have it here. GPAT. Let's clone this again. You can see it just shows copy cloning the repository. Learn with me back end owned by T Paul DK. You see. So because I gave it only the repository name, it assumes that it is my own because I've instructed it that if you have only repository name, know that it's my own. So go and clone from mine. Right, so it says done. I don't want it to be displayed. No man message displayed. That's what. That's why I, I redirected the output. You know, but then it it focuses on error report. Where is the repository? Look at it here. Again, I'm going to delete it again and delete this test file. Okay, not now. Let me delete this repository even first. Okay, so it, it becomes necessary where you understand the work of that thing is. If there is error now, for example, if I try to close something that is not issue, let's say learn with me and stop here. Right, this is it does not exist, but it's a valid repository name, so it will go. So cloning the repository by learning with me owned by T Podic, it will now click done. That normally I have not asked it to report errors if it was not clean. If it was not uh -uh. Are you see do I have a repository last? Excuse me. <laughs> um, okay, no, I think this one has been here. Um, I'm not sure what I'm doing again. <laughs> I'm not, I don't know what just happened. What just happened? Has this been here? So, oh, I have a repository that I didn't know. That's interesting, though. I didn't I thought it was done with me front end and with me back end. Okay, that's interesting. Okay. So let's put the one that will cause error. Uh, G, G, uh, let me clear this. Let's say learn with. Okay, I don't have anyone called learn with. So let's go. You see the speed with which it said done. The speed is too fast for for a procedure to be cloned. Except, uh, uh, anyway, it's possible. Fast network. Uh, except, it, but, but, but if it happens this way, it's an empty repository. But so now check. And it's not here. So we'll now. If it's, in case you're wondering what is happening, just go to your home page, just do cat, put that T there, forward slash dot. Now this is not, it's not something, it's not a big deal, right? What I mean is this, if you go see the, this is, this is that T that's showing, it means that you're on you're your home page. Otherwise, you don't uh, see the T there to go to your home page, right? So if it ls hyphen a, you will find this file, the file among these files, here, here it is, here it is, almost looking like it came with the system, but no, <laughs> my script created it, so if I cut into that file, dot log clone, I will now see what happened, what went wrong, I, I instructed it to print the date, the time, in GMT, right, and then it will print the message, the message cloning into so he, he gave it the name i gave it right and then it says repository not found right and then it, it tells me that he tried doing this but did not find it so that's why i do it i don't want it to be printing all of this on the 
on the screen. I didn't want it. That's why I put this particular line. Everything I've been explaining so far is just like that. It's interesting. Okay, not everything. I've explained to understand. Yeah. Let's go back to this place. Now, this is a logic that makes it know that A, if I give you only a repository name, know that it is top mass repository. Right? And then here I said, else, if the number of arguments are equal to two, then check very well. Check whether the first argument matches this uh, regular expression and check whether the second argument matches this uh, 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 regular expression. Now, if they do match the two reg regular expressions, then know that the first argument is the user and the second argument is the repository. Right? In, in my first video, right? In my first video of this series, I, I used it to close someone's repository. It's simple. Just put the person's name as the first argument, as in the person's username, and put the name of the repository as the next argument. And it will go and clone the repository and clone it with your GPAT. The essence of it is that it is not just cloning it, it is cloning, it is adding your GPAT, your PAT for you. So you don't have to go and look, start looking for your personal assets token every time you want to clone a repository that you're collaborating with somebody on. You know, you don't, you don't, you don't have to, don't need to be doing that. You don't need to do that, right? And so, now I said, if it's not early in this case, then print this message, say, invalid username or repo. I believe it does not match and exit with one. That is, I'm saying, if it does not, this one is saying, if this matches, do this. If it does not match, know that it's invalid repository. Then I said, this else now belongs to, this else belongs to this one. This is an if. Yeah, that has an S and that an S if and that has an, another S, right? But this inside here, this is a nested if, nested if, and if inside if. So this if is inside this one. So this if has an S, all right? So this is the S of the bigger if, or the main if. So I say this one says uh, if is none of these cases the matter, then print this error, print that the person should. Um, um, why did I use echo E? Echo I think E. We let this characters to print, you know. They go, I think we let this characters to print to be special. What I mean is this if I do echo, um, I am coming and put backwards last end that is supposed to be a new line and say, Wait for me. And I press enter. You can see it's printing it like an ordinary character. But if I go and add hyphen e to that echo, say echo hyphen e, it will now treat it as a special character. Look at it. So it is not print out the bubble slash n again. It now printed a new line. I am coming. Wait for me. If that stuff was a tab, let's say I put one tab here, a new line and a tab. This bubble slash t stands for tab space. See what happens. It gives that tab. It gives that tab space. Right, so that's why I used echo. I think e here because I wanted to give tab space here. If you put the wrong, that's why you get this result like this. If I if I do gb it and give one nonsense or invalid repo name, you know one impossible repo name. See what it does. So it will print error, input not valid. It gives that tab space, and it gives some tab space here. You know tab space is. It's not um, it's not about how large or how big. It, I mean, it focuses on maintaining one line, a particular line, you know. So that's why this one is smaller and this one is bigger. I believe you understand what I mean. Uh, so that's what that line is doing. Uh, this line of code is doing. And then I say, if this happens, then stop here. I mean, it's done run this inside the program. Stop here, right? Or it, otherwise, if you check this guy and it's true, or you check this guy and it's true, then run all the way to this place. And print this thing, print echo, clone it into whatever the repository is, owned by whoever the owner is, and then log. I even put comments here. Then if now echo this, if I print, see what this command does. If I use this command here, uh, echo, it prints to the, the date, right? So this is the date of this recording. <laughs> Where I am now. This is the time where I am now, right? <clears throat> right. So that's it. But, okay, this time is in GMT actually. This time is in GMT. So that's it. And I put the command there and say, just do that. 
do that. And when you do this, don't print it out. Redirect it. You know, this is supposed to be one uh, greater than greater than. Redirect it into that same file. Then clone and redirect whatever the error is into the same file. If there's no error, just write, it will just do cloning into. Put it there. And after that, echo done. You can see I put two tab space, which is the reason why the done tends to appear. Ah, I've cleared the screen, I would have shown you again. You observe that the done was appearing somewhere. It gives two, it gives it actually gave two tab space each time and appeared uh, somewhat centralized. Okay, so that's it about the script. I'm just taking you through. I, mean, I just started, started thinking about it. How do I? How do I? I don't. I'm not tired of. Uh -uh, I'm looking my PAT every time. What is that? You know. And now, so I have SSH. I have my PAT. So if I'm collaborating with somebody, I can't. I can't use SSH because I'm. I am not. My public is not added to the person's. Not added to the person's uh, repository. So I, I. I. I am compelled to use my script and clone the person's um, repository as a contributor uh, by the way if you use your PAT to clone a repository that you're not a contributor to uh, there is nothing bad it will clone successfully but you still cannot push to it because you do not have access to it the essence of PAT is for github to identify you that person access to it. github business is to identify you so if it identifies you and look that you have no business with the repository even if you clone with your person access token it you cannot push to it you can you can always get pulled see the changes but you can push to it you can add right okay that's by the way uh, i think i think that's enough but let me show you let me show you one more i think the second i i yes i think in the second uh um series in the second uh, um video in this series i i even did i even played with codes i add i wrote a bash script that adds two numbers from any number any two numbers given to it from the command line mm, interesting right so I just want to end this on by explaining the scripts that I wanted to explain from the very beginning. <coughs> okay, let me explain the one that I use in pushing to to uh, get. Um, where is it? Git zero git. Ah, okay, this is it. The other one removes some git. All right. So this is how it works. It tells you enter now. I save this file as P. I don't like stress. <laughs> so long as it's my computer, I remember it. So if I just touch P like this, see what comes out. Enter the file to be pushed. That's what that's instruction in the script. It, is, it was instructed to echo enter the file to be pushed. And when it echoes it, it should read whatever was passed and save it in a variable called file it should get it whatever you put inside there it will get it so you can just put echo and put dot i think I, yeah i also demonstrated it in my previous videos yes and then it will not go and do git add whatever you put there if it's only dot it will put git add dot if it's name of a file it will do git add name of that file if it's the name of a directory it will do git add the name of the other directory and then when it does that it will not print again and say and say okay let me just put dots down dot you know dot means every changes yeah right if i do this okay this i'm actually not in the repository right now so it's printing the error not a repository but i wanted you to see that it will print this and say enter your commit message i actually added no quotation marks so that you don't need to add some max here yeah. whatever you put as a commit message it will go here it will read it and save it in a variable called message right as message and then if you not do git commit hyphen m and do uh, this you know this is why you don't need to add some mark it will not put within the global code what whatever you put there it will do git push for you you know you push there's this one i, I modified and do git push um um, I think hyphen u origin men or something git push origin men something like that if that's what you want you can modify you can get this scripts modify them to um, to I mean customize them <laughs> you can own them you're free and just just practice I'm encouraging you practice do, do things with what you've learned do some things no matter how small it is no matter how small it is just do something do some your ability to sit down your ability to sit down like this and think think of a problem and solve it ah it's exciting it's exciting it boosts your confidence it's it makes you it makes you want to do more it gives you the confidence that yeah you can do this thing but if let people will be doing big apps solving big problems no problem solve a small one that you can solve solve it 
you know, just solve it. Stop making sure you're solving problem. So if you're an LAX student, I encourage you, hey, it's not by passing the checkers and having good scores, or the real life is bigger than having good scores. You know, a time will come in life when nobody will ask you what you scored. They will not ask you how well you pass the checkers. You know, discover that it's not even, it's not even, you can even do a project, I mean, do it by yourself, pass the checkers very well, and one month later, you, you need to lead to be able to do that project. Or you need to lead to understand what you did. You know why? Because a lot of times we are meant to learn uh, certain things. I mean, you learn very speedily before we know it. We've entered another, we've started studying another concept. Before you know it, another concept. And it's intentionally twisted to look hard. You know, so just try to find time to do something outside the project, no matter how small. When you're learning and practicing, practice. I mean, learn by doing. Okay. Um, if you have any questions, please post them as comments. I will answer you. I will answer you right here. Um, what else do I want to do? Let's play with Bash Script a bit. Let's play with Bash Script a bit. Um, if you have any questions, like I said, put it here. If you're not subscribed to this channel, please do it to subscribe. I think this is a good place to end. Yeah. I've, I've done enough play with Java. With, listen, I'm, I'm killing this process. I've done enough. I've played with codes, you know. I've shown you some of my scripts. Um, I have. A, an interesting file here that I do that I've named in my bin directory. I just wanted to remind myself the commands that I have uh, here saved here. So how I use them to uh, I use RS. I think I demonstrated some of the other things. If I want to reverse a string, I, I the command is RS. So this is a command that did not come with my system, but that my command. I do P, I push, I do R, I remove a file from Git. You know, I delete if I from read. I do S. I hide the message in secret codes in as I codes. I do D. I decode the message hidden in secret uh, as as I code or as key codes. You know, I do R D. I can remove a directory from Git Hub. You know, R S. I can reverse a string. You know, let me show you. If I do R S. Are you serious? What an embarrassment! So I don't have it here again. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, I, I, I didn't know I didn't have it there. I don't have it here again. Oh, this interest that's interesting. RS7, I'm sure this one is there. I'm sorry, sir. so you, you can see the algorithm I'm using. I, I am actually doing the encryption by moving every every letter by seven, seven steps forward. So if it's A, A becomes G. If I do RS7, RS7, um, if I do A, A, A. So that you'll be, you'll be able to know space one one one. This one will become seven 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 or eight eight eight. Is it eight eight eight? I'm not sure now. So I want to become G G G or H H. Let's find out. Enter. So it says H. Okay, it's H H H and eight eight eight. You see, that's the logic is using to hide um, um, the the, the letter. So if I want to do a, a, a if I want to send a secret message, I will like. Um, Hello. How are you today? Watch where this A is now. This A will become H. So I go enter. Oh, it turns to something that does not make sense. But see, the A is H. He moved everything by eight. But I instructed it not to move um, punctuations. You know that's why this uh, um, um, this guy did not move. Mm, I don't want. I, I use Python to do this one. I don't actually want to work with it. That's why the other one is able to um, reverse it because that one reverses the effect. If I copy this stuff now, so the way I do it is I use this one. If I want to write a script message, I use something to write it. I send this program to the other person that from the other end. I say, okay, this is the script message I write. Decode it from there. And now that I've exposed it, if I want to do it again, maybe I can move it by 12 and send the program to the person that will move it by 12. <laughs> you know, just try to remain secret. So look at it, the code it moves it back. Moves it back. You know, becomes uh so um another interesting command is the D D ah, D to B D to B this motor binary, right? Are you C code? Are you C? And this is the source code. So it prompts the user for in, for in, for input and confirms the amount of binary. It checks to ensure that the, the user's input is a valid one. Ah, very interesting. I, I didn't just convert, have it to um, build it to convert.
to binary. I built this. It was like I enjoyed myself when I was doing it, right? I check for let me, let me show you uh, D to B. So it says convert. Let me clear the screen. Oh no, stop. Clear the screen. Run again. D to B. It says convert from this model binary. I was wondering if I it like this. <laughs> and that is my value. So if I say convert 10 to binary number, it says uh, 0 in binary is 1010. What is it doing? What is it doing? Hmm. One, two, four, eight. This is actually the value of ten in binary. But I don't, why is it saying zero in binary? That's confusing. So it says you want to continue. If you do C, you continue. If you do Q, you will quit. So if you do, if I do C, it says enter another one. Let me convert to. Ah, there's a bug in this program right now. <laughs> it's saying zero. No, no, there's a bug in this program. I need to fix it. I'll, I'll, I'll look at it later and fix it. It's supposed to be it's supposed to say 10 is this and print 2 in binary is this so 2 in binary is actually 10 actually this is correct so if i said i want to continue i just press q and it will end now if i press give it an invalid let's say let's say 15 it says it's supposed to say it's supposed to say 15 in binary is 1111 this is correct and then if i if i enter neither c nor q and enter something else a it says invalid input. I'm just, I'm just trying to, to test my my capacity to do test driven development. Where you develop something, you're testing to see whether somebody will try to put uh, invalid, make invalid inputs, things like that. So play with codes, play with codes. I mean, I'm going, I'm going to check this stuff out. Whatever is doing this stuff, could the pro could bug enter into your uh, binary, your binary file. I'll find that why it's not why it's, I'll fix it. I'll fix it. All right, thank you very much. This is a good place to end. Um, keep learning, keep learning, keep learning. Don't think you're lagging behind. Don't think, don't never feel inferior. Keep learning. Ah, keep learning. Keep learning. I, I, I came from zero and I'm here right now. Ah, keep someone said he could arrest me for making that comment. That nothing about me suggests that I came zero with zero knowledge of coding. <laughs> but the kids the kids are time to eat right the kids are time to eat look at all, all of this stack i'm just looking at myself i'm like wow <laughs> so all of this stuff <laughs> in fact this is not all recently oh i learned next js recently and it's so interesting and not next now not the react framework the next you know the backend framework n e s t ah very interesting very interesting that's that's what i'm using to build this uh, um what's it called now this repository this app the back end of this app all right so see you when we see you again thank you so much for being part of this section um if you're not part of the live audience and you're watching later on still um, post your question as comment if you have one and please when you like my materials like this don't just like them in your mind support click like just click like uh, click like share someone else will like it uh, it could help someone else as well someone else will learn thank you very much my name is topman paul dk bye